Peace and blessings to you. I thank God I um, can come before you again. First of all, I wanted to say that, you know, we're yet praying for those who are living in the, these areas where there's floods, you know, in different parts of the world, terrible floods with loss of life and, and destruction of, of crops and destruction of property. Some people losing everything they have, you know, they all they were able to salvage is what's on their back. And here in the United States, we are dealing with, just dealt with tornadoes tearing up many people's homes. And is that that in that place too, they've lost property, they've lost, there has been some loss of life. And, you know, they, they some escaped with just what was on their back. And so we're watching these things happen. We've just seen the earthquakes recently over in Asia. So so we're looking at, you know, the earth is in travail and God says it's that way because the earth is waiting for the redemption of the sons of God. And so we see the earth shaking and quaking and floods and, you know, we haven't had fires to my knowledge yet. We're still dealing with uh, the uh, the effects of pandemics in the United States. I'm not sure if it's in other areas, but you know, it's it's it doesn't matter what form that trial comes in. It doesn't matter if that trial is a divorce, that trial is a broken marriage, that trial is a loss of loved ones, that trial could be a child going astray like the prodigal son. You know, whatever it is, that's a trial. If it's a trial to you, it is a trial, and that trial will make you strong if you are the one that's left behind to live. And if you can hear my voice, God is going to use you and he's going to show you something so that you could be a blessing to other people because no trial comes and nothing is learned from it. Something is always gleaned and gained from going through the hard place, the difficult place. And I, I pray for any of you who are going through these things right now. And I pray that you, I pray your strength. I pray that God is is sustaining you with His hands. That you know that God is with you, even though it may be very difficult. And we know what trials. You know, the trials hit and it just seemed to disrupt and disturb everything in your life. Not to mention the stress that it caused. Uh, in some cases, it causes fear. It causes grief. It causes discomfort. But trials come with all the negative ramifications of every emotion we can ever go through. You know, it's a part of the... the um, part of the let's see they call it the, the 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 phase of healing that that you know we go through when we go through terrible trials you know it's first uh you're in shock <laughs> you know you're in shock when something hits you and then we move to a place of anger you know we, we're angry that thing that this happened and many people ask well how did god let this happen why didn't god protect me why didn't god protect my loved one why did god let this happen and then you come to a place of acceptance. And I want you to know in that place of acceptance is when you are learning how God operates in your life. Trials come to make you strong. But you have to understand that God said he will instruct you. And, and he will teach you every chance, every place we go, every, every road we take, every path we go down. God is instructing us and God is teaching us how to go through the hard place for our good and for his glory. It don't feel like it. I remember one year I went through a whole barrage of trials. I'm like, what in the world, God, is going on? But God took me to, to this, this strange path I'd never been on before. And it was like trial after trial after trial after trial. And I remember wondering, Lord, what are we doing? You know, God deliver me. And I, I would just sit back sometimes in total disbelief because we, there was death, you know, there was loss. I mean, everything you can, you can imagine, there was rejection, but God was there. Even when I couldn't see him working, he was working. And when the time for that trial, when it came to an end, I was a very different woman than I was before that trial. And, and I was in my 50s, my late 50s at the time. I had no idea how this thing was supposed to work. 
And I'm thinking, you know, how you, you, you're thinking, well, I'm a good person. Why am I going through this? I got more trials than everybody. Yes. And everybody's watching you go through that trial. And those with understanding will see something you don't see because that's what happened to me. Those with understanding of how God operates in our lives recognize something I didn't recognize. To me, I felt, and I told the Lord, I said, God, this looks bad. I got more trials than everybody. But at the end of the year, there was one year I had trials. I mean, it's like almost every month something crazy was happening. And I, the the middle of that year, I had a grandbaby that died in my arms. And I, you know, I'm like, I, I can't, I just can't, God, I can't do this. But I could, he brought me through that. And, and every, I mean, every month it was something. And what I learned from that trial, someone came and talked to me and says they were having some issues with their family. And, and this beautiful man said, I've watched you go through trials this whole year. And I watched your behavior and your attitude this whole year. Show me how to walk through a trial. And I realized, Lord, you didn't just teach me. You were, you were actually parading me in front of others so that they would know how to go through a trial. And so I was able to tell him, just a little bit I could think of right there. My whole thing was, hey, I just leaned on God. That's all I know to do. Just, just lean on God. And when and and when it was over, and trust you me, every trial has an expiration date. When it was over, it was over. It was over. Psalms 138 and verse 8. I'm back up to 7. Oh, my Though I walk, David, see, David knew trials. David was running from uh, King, King, King Saul. He was, he was being threatened to be killed by him. This man was running for his life. You know, he did so much stuff. And, and, and David was, could have taken King Saul's life. He had the opportunity, but he didn't do it. But at the time, he knew that there was, um, a, a, I can say, a death warrant on his life. He was running for his life. And so he says in verse 7 of Psalms 138, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. See, that's faith. That's faith. I'm going through this thing, God, but you are going to revive me. You're going to restore me in this place. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. Satan is continuously wanting to destroy us. He is the enemy of God. And God would let him just go so far. Then he got to stop. And you know, I, 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 I'm talking to so many people lately who are going through trials. And I mean, you know, it's like they, they and I know how they feel because I've been there. I've been there over and over again till I learned this too shall pass. My job is to help them through the tough place. Verse 8 says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. That is so powerful. He's saying God will perfect that which concerns me. What areas of your life need perfecting or maturity? You know, sometimes people have a timid spirit. They're, they're, they're timid people. And they would not, under normal circumstances, ever put themselves in a position to be bothered with any other human being if they could help it. They're timid. They don't want no trouble. They want everything to be cool. They don't want to be bothered. But if God has put his hand on you, if God has called you, you will not remain timid because he tells us be strong and of good courage. So he's going to put you in position to be, to be strength, strengthened, strengthened. Don't matter. Don't matter if you are, timid. <laughs> Get over it. When God finishes, you will no longer be timid. May take you 40 years. Don't matter. May take you 40. Remember, you know, Moses ran from Egypt and stayed gone for 40 years. 40 years. 
Then God sent him back into the place he ran from, the back to the place he feared. Listen, that, that, that's, that's a message right there. You know, a lot of times God will send you right back into the place that you were afraid of and ran from. But this time when you go back, I'm talking to those right now. I'm talking to those who are going through trial, trials, a trial or trials. You might have ran from a situation. You might say, hey, I'm out of this. I'm, I'm never going back there again. But you didn't learn nothing. You didn't learn a thing. You did not complete the assignment that God had for your life. He will send you right back into either that situation or one just like it. Because you are going to have victory over that horrible, horrible vice called fear. God did not call us to be fearful, but faithful. He sent Moses out. He allowed Moses to run out of Egypt. Then he sent him right back into Egypt. But when he came back this time, he came back with power. He didn't know how much power he was going to have. Moses had no idea what God was going to do when he sent him back to Egypt. Moses didn't know he was about to become one of the most powerful figures in history, that he would actually produce supernatural um, plagues on a nation that God is sending him back to, that very nature that saved him from the beginning. Let me just show you something, because you know something, y'all need to think about some things. Egypt was where Moses was saved out of the river. He was his 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 um, Pharaoh's daughter pulled him out of the river and took him into the palace and saved his life. He was saved in Egypt. So was Jesus. Jesus ran to Egypt, and Jesus was saved in Egypt as well from the from the same thing. The babies were going to be killed up to two years old. And Moses' mother put him in the, in the Nile River, and he was saved out of the Nile. Jesus' mother and father, Mary and Joseph, saved him from the persecution of being killed by, by uh, you know, by, by the king, the, the uh, Caesar or Pharaoh, whatever. I mean, that's it's not Pharaoh, Caesar, and sent him, you know, who was ordered that all the babies would be killed up to the age of two. And his parents took him to Egypt. Egypt has been a place of covering for God's people. Egypt has not always been a place. And even though, you know, Egypt is, is what we use Egypt and we say, you know, it's, it's a place of sin. Remember, Egypt was a covering for Moses and Jesus. We can't forget that. Is that not how God operates? The very place that he would save them from, he would also send them into. Because that's what adversity looks like that's what trials look like god never not god never intended for us to run from our trial trials he wanted us to face our trials with boldness and courage even women we are to be courageous as well we can't run from problems because they're uncomfortable we face all things and so when we look at verse uh, 8 again I said again, the Lord will perfect that which he, which concerns me. Everything that concerns you. What, 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 what is God's plan for your life? You don't know, do you? Some of you are older, you know, seniors, you already got the memo because you're walking in it right now. But the rest of you, when you're young, you don't know his plans for your life. You know where you are. You know your plans, but God has his plans. You have your plans. He know the plans he has for you to bring you a hope in the future. That's that's his plans. Your plans may be to do something else. God completely changed my plans in life. I was a seamstress and loved it. I also it later uh, went into an office, began to work in an office, and I liked that too. I didn't know I was going in a whole different direction. It took a trial to change my course. But God perfected that thing that concerns me. He matured me. He brought out of me that which I didn't know was even in me. 
He began to work with what was what he put in me. God anoints us. He equips us and then he brings us into his purpose. And it can take years before that happens. So don't grow weary in well-doing. You don't know what God is going to do with you. God wants us to be in a place where we are revived to do his will. Stepping out into territories and unknown places. Roads less traveled that we didn't know about. Don't want to go there. But God said, your victory is at the end of that road. Your assignment is at the end of that road you don't want to go down. So don't despise small beginnings and don't despise trials and tribulations. They will make you strong. You know, if you got a trial, you can almost guarantee the size of the trial will show you the size of the assignment. Think about that. You know, Satan don't bother people and just, you know, just, just, just a heck of it. When he really comes after those that God has an anointing for, he will do everything to stop you, to detour you. But God, I'm going to say it again, but God. It says here, your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. God's mercy remains on us no matter what happens. Your mercy endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. We are the works of Jesus' hand. We are the works of God's hand. He says, don't forsake us, O oh God. Don't, 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 don't forsake us. I need you. We need you. So God will work his plans out in your life because he know the plans he have for you, I said. He's not going to just give you hope, but he's going to bring that future to you in a way that you never thought it would come. I have gone down twists and turns and, you know, hit looked like I hit, uh, you know, dry places. and and But I was supposed to learn something in the dry place. I, he don't send you into a dry place and just drop you. He send you there and there's something in that dry place you are going to learn for your future, for your good and his glory. Did you hear what I said? For your good and his glory. God gives us the bread of adversity, the word says, and the water of affliction. He gives us that. He gives it to us so that we can learn how to walk circumspectly before him and to mature. You know, whenever you have gone through so many trials or different trials in life, nothing really bothers you. God will show you ingenious ways to, to make it through certain trials after that. You didn't think about it before, but he's working something out in you that you could not have worked out without God. And not to mention that you would see other people who are going through the same thing and you got the answer because you went through it. Your eyes shall see your teacher, the word says. Who is our teacher? Jesus. He is our teacher, Holy Spirit. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father now, so Holy Spirit is in us. And you know, he speaks in your spirit to you what God wants you to do. You may not even understand it. Why is God telling me to go down this road? You ever drive someplace? I, I was I have a GPS and I was driving. I was we were coming, my kids and I were coming back from someplace and my GPS told me to go a different way. And so I was the lead car. So I take this other route that my GPS took me. And we were on the interstate. So we got off the interstate. And this is when the GPS was, you know, fairly new for us. So I got off the interstate because it told me to. Although I knew my way home, just keep straight. And I would have been home staying on the interstate till I got to my exit. But it told me to get off. I said, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a trust the process. I don't know where this thing is leading me, but I know how to go home if anything happens. So I get off the interstate. We're driving through these country roads, and these little towns, and, and I'm like, well, where in the world are we going? And, and, and we just kept driving. And my kids say, Mom, you know, call Mom, where are we going? I said, GPS is leading me this way, and we're going to follow. Well, what I did not know was that some miles ahead on the interstate, there was a devastating car crash with death. And it took us off that road so we wouldn't get stuck in that traffic. 
and took us, I mean, all these little windy little towns and winding uh, places that we went through. And then it brought us back to the interstate once we got in front of it. My kids were the really, well, Mom, where are we going, Mom? We're going to waste the gas. And I said, you know what? I don't know where we're going, but the GPS is telling me to go this way. And so we're going this way. Now, the GPS are better now. It will tell you what's in the way. There's an accident. You are avoiding generally, so you know to follow that. But at that time, it didn't tell you. It just said, get off. You know, it told me to get off and exit at this particular exit. And I did. Life is that way. Life is that way. You're going down a certain course and all of a sudden you are led to take a different course. You don't know why. Why God leading me this way? Why am I going this way? What's going on? But you still stay on the course that God is leading you. Makes no sense to you. Have no idea why you're doing it. But you do it because you are following the voice, the leading, the unction of God. Later on, later on, you'll find out why God led you that way. It's for your good and for his glory. One of the things that trials teach us, and we don't ever think about, what am I supposed to be learning from this hard place? Because he takes us to the hard places. What am I supposed to be learning in this hard place? Well, for one thing, you learn that trials produces humility. You might be a person, I won't say prideful, but you got some pride going on in you. And God wants to bring that thing down and destroy that pride in you. Trials will do it. Now, it depends on how much you need to learn, how maybe how many times you got to go through. Because one thing about God, he doesn't try to destroy us. One, one thing I, 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 I can tell you, when I got saved many years ago, and I thought... I knew it all. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I thought I knew it all. Knew it all, and throughout the years, God began to show me just pull back just a little bit of that curtain and let me see me. I didn't like what I saw, but I never saw that before. Now He didn't show me anything but that one thing. Now there was a whole plethora of things He was going to show me over the years, but He would. He's so kind. He's such a good, good Father. He doesn't show us all of our issues at one time. Because if he did, we would feel like, ah, I, I can't do this. I just can't do this life. You know, I'm, I'm out. He shows you a little bit at a time. So he shows you one thing about yourself and you're surprised that you see that. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know I was this kind of way, Lord. And then you repent and you pray and you thank God for revealing to you who you are. And you, you're happy as you can be thinking that you're all good. Uh, keep living. He'll show you something else about yourself. And over a process of a lifetime, because he's going to get that gold. You know, gold is, is, is really funny. You press that bad boy, and, and gold is even more beautiful. Diamonds are that way, too. You know, anything that's worth having has had to undergo pressure. I praise God for his goodness. Humility cannot exist where there is pride. So God has to get rid of the pride. The pride. Again, humility cannot exist where there is pride. We have to realize that when we are operating in a place of pride, we can't hear from God. We can't hear from him. We have to be back to a place where we say, Okay, God, I got this. I got this. Humble yourself. Charles also teaches us to see. See what? He teaches us to see what our purpose is. You know, so many people walk around and saying, oh, I wonder what my purpose is. Well, they have one. What is my purpose? You have a purpose, even if you don't know it. But he shows us our purpose because we begin to ask questions when we have a trial, we begin to ask those hard questions. Why am I here? What is God trying to show me? What do I need to get rid of? He he begins. Listen, God loves you. He's going to show you your stuff so you can be where he wants you to be.
you know, we're wondering what does God want me to do? You know, why am I on this path? He will begin to place you on a path. And you may not know at that very moment, but now you know that there is a purpose for your life. You know, a lot of times people get into horrible car accidents or something happens to them. And then they, they always say, God saved me for a purpose. He did. Yes, he did. He saved you for a purpose. Now, the thing is for you to ask God, what is my purpose? I'm going to give you a little secret. I'm going to tell you what the secret is. Get into God's word. Start praying more. He will reveal to you. He will show you. You can't know your purpose in life without prayer. You have to pray and say, God, show me what you are leading me to do. And he is, oh my goodness, God, he's waiting to show you. Mm. Another thing, those who suffer learn how to look at people in a way of sympathy. People are suffering out here. I mean, there, there is earthquakes and everything, earthquakes and fires and floods and tornadoes and storms and, you know, uh, crime of every kind. All kinds of stuff is going on. And people are suffering just the normal everyday life. You know, we even are, are seeing a lot of things where, where young women are, are being kidnapped. Children are being kidnapped. You know, things are happening. So so these things happen. So there's all kinds of trouble in life. And we have to just ask ourselves, do we have enough sympathy and empathy for people to pray for them? Do we pray for those who have lost loved ones? You know, some people have it harder than others. Some people got a really good support system when they go through grief. And they, there's a lot of people who will just rally behind them and, and bless them. When, when, when my mother died, I had a wonderful support system. The people around me made me feel, um, they, they couldn't take the grief away. But I knew I was loved. And so I could go through that hard place a little easier than if I didn't have anybody. Or it, even when my father passed, you know, the people around me surrounded me. The, these people are, you know, they really make my life. And I, and I love them. And so when hard times came, even if they didn't call me and some might have texted me, I mean, these are people close to me. Some might have texted me, some came over to the house, but you know, they were there. And that's how we're supposed to be. When people care, they're there. Amen? Amen? <laughs> well, we've learned to develop a generous spirit. We can't see people starving. Now, I know in some cities now they're telling you you can't feed the hunger, the people that's hung, hung, that are hungry. I don't know why you can't. But uh, I don't think it's in my city. But, you know, um, you know, if you see someone in need, bless them. I've always done that. You know, we used to do, do um, you know, street, what I call street ministry and, and get out there on the street, you know, for a while. And, and you know, of course, there's there's plenty of of people who are, well, they were homeless, but, you know, they were in the shelters. Now, then it's not like it is now. I'm sure my city have homeless people in it and homeless communities. I don't know where they are because I don't, I don't venture out that far. But... You know, there are those who go out and look for those people, look for those who are hungry and, and, and be a blessing to them. Sympathy. When you see someone lost, have lost a loved one, pray for them. You know, someone uh, uh, is divorced or just having a hard time in their marriage, pray for them. They're sick. Pray for them. we got to have a generous spirit, not just with, with reaching out to people, but also supporting them financially if you can. If you can. We have to understand, too, the beautiful love of God when we're going through. God would take us through. You know, we have to understand his love that transcends all human understanding. And also to know that he loves us and he wants us to share this love on other people. We are to spread the love. That's what he called us to do. And then we go, we go on to trial to remember how God brought us through. That's the main thing I want to tell you right now. Every trial you go through, I want you to think back. How did God bring you through? How did he bring you through? What did he do? You know, there was a song back in the day when I was young. It's how I got over. 
not not get over like the world get over. How did you get over this place that you were in that you were always uh you, you were struggling or or, or things were not right, or the money wasn't right, the job wasn't right, something going on. Can I ask you, how did God bring me over? He would show you through memory, bringing you back to where you were. How I got over with the hand of God and the graciousness of God. So I want you to think about that. The next time you go through a trial, God is with you. He will bring you through. Amen? Understand that. He'll never, never leave you or nor forsake you. But the trials will make you strong and it will build character and virtue in you. Amen. Hope this bless you.